Hello everybody, this is Hypersonic and welcome back to the Sonic CD comparison series. In the previous video, Season 2 was finally concluded. If you haven't watched the Season 2 comparisons, I highly suggest you do so right now because this series of videos here will assume that you've watched the entirety of Season 2 as I'll discuss the scores and results of that season in this season. I'll give you about 10 seconds to watch the 10 videos or hold your peace to continue watching the video without watching Season 2, which would spoil the entire experience. With that out of the way, it's time to jump into the main topic of this video, but first, I have to discuss the rules since they have changed a bit. Instead of 33 rounds like in Season 2, there are only 7 rounds in this season, and the majority is 4 instead of 17. So while there are substantially much less rounds, one win in either round is going to be a huge difference. And there's not going to be any comparisons for Desert Dazzle or Valkyrie in the season for several reasons. We're just going to keep it to the seven main levels that we know from the game. The winners will be picked by how much they fit, they'll be picked by their musical composition, and they'll be picked by their overall sound quality. What this means is that the average winning track generally fits the time zone of the round. Now since this is the passing comparisons, the themes do have to sound past-like. These tracks also have a composition where its instruments, vocals, and melody are executed well. The track has a clear sound quality to where the track is in high definition. This is basically what I mean by overall sound quality. Now since I know that some people will take this series too serious, I do have to remind people that this is just a competition for fun. It's not supposed to be meant to be taken this seriously. If you have a different opinion from mine, then say it respectfully down in the comments. And please don't fight with any other people that have dissenting opinions. This is just for fun. And I also want you guys to remember that there is no objectively better track when it comes to music. Music is a completely subjective topic and people are going to like different things. And my opinion on a lot of these tracks is going to be different from somebody's opinion. It may be different from the entire consensus. I don't actually know what the consensus is for these tracks, but my opinions on these tracks will be different. So please remember to remain respectful. And with that done, let's go back to the main video. Hello everybody, this is Hypersonic and welcome to the passing comparison series for Sonic CD. Man, I've been waiting to say those words for quite some time. One year ago, shortly after the conclusion of Season 2 of the Sonic CD Comparison Series, my friends were uh, talking about the U.S. past themes from KMS, and I actually got my first listing to them a year ago, and ever since then I've thought about doing an actual comparison on them in the future, which the future is now. The Comparison Series will begin here momentarily, just after we get this intro done. This comparison series will be different from the other two comparison series I did on this channel, as we're going to go from the oldest area to the newest area. For example, Paunchy Panic is by far the oldest area on Little Planet, and I do think it is fitting that we just do the past theme series from oldest to newest. And next after Paunchy Panic is Collision Chaos, Tidal Tempest, and Quartz Quadrant, all of which look like they take roughly around the same time. So we'll just do them in the order that they come in. And then we go all the way in the future to Star Seaway Pass, which looks like it takes place around the same time of ancient Rome. And then we traverse to the two big factories of Little Planet. One by the inhabitants of Little Planet and one by Dr. Eggman himself, who has corrupted the timeline. I'm going to actually swap Metallic Madness and Mikey Workbench. Like, yeah, Metallic Madness is the last of these in terms of creation, but... I'm going to save Wacky Workbench for last because it's my favorite Sonic CD level, and the best one should be saved for last. This is a seven round contest between Japanese composers Nafumi Hateya and Masafumi Ogata versus American composer KMS, aka King Meteor Studios. The reason why this is just KMS doing the American tracks instead of Spencer Nielsen and Mark Crew is because in the original version of Sonic CD, the past themes couldn't be made. The way how the game was coded, or made, the past themes from the Japanese soundtrack were basically hard coded in the game, so they were very hard to remove. So technology limitations basically screwed over the American composers from actually making more 
music for the American past. Which is why you have people basically making their own U.S. past themes on YouTube. KMS isn't the only one, there are others, but let's be honest, most of the others haven't even compared to KMS. But it does suck that uh, we were screwed out of seven potentially really good tracks. I mean, judging by how things usually go around here in the game, I'm pretty sure what Spencer Nielsen and Mark Crew would have come up with would have been at least decent, if not great. But this will do. I think this will be a good replacement for what could have been. Made the first one to get the four, win. And with that all the way, let's finally go to our first area of the map, Palm Tree Panic. Welcome to Palm Tree Panic Pass, the first of the seven, or presumably eight or nine areas of little planet to form. Aside from the palm trees that this place is named after, there is a big lake here, and there are some waterfalls here and there. There even seems to be mountains in the background. The best is yet to come. Round 1, Palmchi Panic Past. Here's the Japanese version. And now for the American version. And here's the 510 prototype.
Time for the comparison. The Japanese version is very prehistoric sounding off the bat. The way how it uses its instruments gives a very low energy feeling, which is quite surprising considering it's Paul Japan in the Japanese soundtrack. I do like the attention to detail how there are no vocals here, which means that there's no children here, which children were definitely the main aspect of the vocals in Paul Japan by far. Which I don't really get why in the future themes they didn't sound like adults. I thought that was a very much wasted potential a very much wasted time to make more improvements to the track. I think it would have made the track score a bit higher. It is what it is. Now, the way how the PCM sound chip is actually used in this track makes it sound like the average Jurassic era type theme. I can see why a lot of people think this is the most prehistoric sounding track for the Japanese OST. And I could actually agree with that one on some extent. Uh, I'm going to look back at the others, but this one may be the most prehistoric sounding track in the Japanese soundtrack. And of course, this song has a good melody, it has good percussion and bass line, good instrument use. As for the American version, I actually like how it gives the level more life and energy. It's very upbeat, it has that sort of paradise in the past sort of feel, which fits Fallen Japanic very well. It also sounds kind of prehistoric, the flute definitely shows that. And it's a very good bass line, I actually like how some of the synths and pads are used to make it sound nostalgic. Overall, I do think AMS did it really good in this track, I really think he did. The Phi 10 prototype is why you consider it to be generally, once again, another upgrade over the Japanese soundtrack. Which makes the speed up theme the only time where the Phi 10 prototype was actually a downgrade. But alas, this is an upgrade over the Japanese version. And I do see this one being a closer competitor than the Japanese version. I do think this track fits the level. It fits the time zone very well. It makes it sound like a paradise in the past, which I guess the US version also went for that feel as well. I don't think it was intentionally inspired by that, of course. I think the US came as passing predates the fandom discovering this theme by about a year or so. Yeah, it's more so of coincidence. But uh, this track is definitely an improvement in terms of melody. I like how it's more fleshed out. And it really just makes me question why this track was replaced with the final version. It did a lot of things correctly. And overall, I would consider this to be a close round with the US version. Now, that's not to say that each one of these tracks has some sort of downgrade or imperfection. The Japanese version it's not really the most enthusiastic track. It's kind of a bit boring sometimes, kind of. It could be kind of entertaining, but sometimes it's just kind of boring. It kind of makes the level just feel a bit boring, which that is a point that is largely present for both versions of Title Tempest present. That's not a good look. The US version, I feel like it's just not as strong as the other Polynesian Panic tracks. The other three American Polynesian Panic tracks are generally scoring better. In fact, all of them do score better. Even at their worst strength, they would still score better than this track. The Fight and Prototype, however, while the Fight and Prototype is an improvement over the Japanese version, I don't really think this one is the best of the Fight and Prototype themes. This is actually currently my least favorite of the three Fight and Prototype themes that we have heard thus far. This even scores lower than the Speed Up theme. And that one was fairly low scoring. It does underperform the average. This is really a close race between the American soundtrack and the Phi 10 soundtrack. Now, here's the issue. You may have noticed that on the scorecard, there isn't a section for the beta soundtrack or the prototype, the Phi 10 prototype. There's a reason for that. The Phi 10 prototype is not the final version. It's just the early version that was discarded in favor of the final version. So, because of this rule, which is still going to be kept from Season 2, the American soundtrack will be the winner of Apology Panic Past, and by a comfortable margin. Now, if the final version of the Japanese soundtrack was what we got in the Fight Sand prototype, I would say that this would be a close U.S. victory. This is just Paul and Panic and the American soundtrack being the overperformer that it is and the Japanese version typically being the huge underperformer that it is. 
that isn't that much unsurprising. Uh, a lot of people who do know this channel well do know that's basically how it goes in Punchy Panic. But this was uh, pretty much one of the tighter races in Punchy Panic. It's not like the future things where the U.S. Soundtrack won by a huge margin. There was actually a chance the U.S. Soundtrack could probably lose, even though the chance wasn't that big. If we're talking about the Vitem prototype versus the American Soundtrack, but... With the Japanese passing, yeah, uh, it was initially close, but uh, over time, uh, I have leaned more to the U.S. version, which, again, I waited for a year to make this series for a reason, and that is one of the reasons. But that concludes the first round, Palantir Panic Pass. The U.S. soundtrack will be the winner. Even if it was going against the Fight and Prototype, it would have been the winner. So that concludes the first episode of the Sonic CD Passing Comparison Series. Let's go back to the world map. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you guys will stay tuned for the second episode in Collision Chaos. And until then, I hope you have a good time, uh, whatever day you're watching this on. God bless you, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.